Good morning, church. We didn't know Adam. <clears throat> but wouldn't you have loved to have been there when God formed him and shaped him with his own hand? From the chemicals of the earth, God is a brilliant chemist, wouldn't you say? Formed him from the dust of the earth, the particles of the earth, and then breathed into Adam the breath of life, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul, a living human being. I love that text, and it reminds me of how today you and I have been shaped and formed by God. And he wants us to live. He wants us to really live. And he breathes into us the breath of life through the Holy Spirit today. I'm, I'm continuing and actually finishing up the sermon that I started last week on shape to serve God. The outline is in your bulletin. I'm just going to quickly talk about the first part. You and I have been shaped by God. We have spiritual gifts. We have a heart, things that we really love to do or passionate about. We have abilities that we're born with. We have experiences of life, whether it's our school or church or work or play, wherever we are, we have these different experiences of life that shape us. And all those come together to, to make our shape. In 1 Peter 4, verse 10, God has given each of us a gift from his variety of spiritual gifts. Uh, thank you for reminding us, Marlon, about the variety. We're all a bunch of fruit, but we're fruit of different colors, right? We, 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 uh, and God has designed us, and God has created us. And he wants us to use our gifts, use them to serve one another well. We keep hearing that theme all morning about serving one another. Our heart is what we listen to. It's that, that thing that is passionate, that we're passionate about. And if we're going to utilize the shape that God has given us, we need to figure out what we really love and, and then what God gave us a heart to really do and then use it for His glory. Abilities is to find your place in ministry, and hopefully it's in the church, in the body, that you find a place to serve and serve the community through the body, that God has a place for you to serve the church where your special abilities can shine and, and just show that you and I all are designed to make a difference. And then there are, there's this fourth reason in your outline, about why we should care about how God has shaped us. We should care because God has created me to be me. I am uniquely made. I am one of a kind. You are one of a kind. You are God's masterpiece. You are knit together in your mother's womb, and you are given a job to accomplish long before you were ever born according to God's purpose and according to God's calling. That's an amazing thing. Now, in verse uh, in number four, the text is Mark 12, verse 30. And it is the text that is used many times in Scripture. And we are told by Jesus, it is the number one most important commandment of all. Mark 12, verse 30. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Heart, soul, mind, and strength. I think... One of the things we could say about this is that God is reminding us of, of the varieties of personalities that we have. When we look at our personalities, we, we know that, again, God loves uniqueness. God loves variety. Every single one of us, we have a different thumbprint, an eye print, an ear print, and we have very different personalities. We have introverts and extroverts. We have doers and thinkers and feelers. We have people that are kind of do things by the way they feel. Some have to think about it for a long time. We go to the Bible. We know that 
uh, personalities were, were, were outstanding. Peter was this impetuous follower of Christ. You have uh, Paul, the push-ahead disciple, a, apostle of the Lord. You had doubting Thomas, the sons of thunder, James and John. All these different personalities. And you look at the different personalities and you say, no wonder there was conflict among the 12 disciples and no wonder there's conflict in the church. We, you, if you notice your hand where you get, where you get the, uh, the most aches and pains in your hand or in other parts of the body or around the joints where they work closely together. It's kind of a, when we work together, we can irritate one another, but God has created us so that not, we don't have to irritate, but we can have balance, balance in our home and balance in our community. And, and the, the beautiful thing about it is, is that there is no such thing as a right or wrong personality. Now there are, there's character development, there's maturity and immaturity and all that, but you are uniquely created to be you. You are an outstanding personality. And just like in woodwork where you, it's easier to, to move with the grain, God wants you to be you. He wants me to be me, you to be you, so that we can work according to our calling and our shaping and our ability and our personality. And when we do that, we're going to find our lives more fruitful and more satisfied. And we're going to do a better job at what we're, we're called to do uh, in our work, our church, our home, our school. So, one more in your shape. Uh, why does it matter? What is your shape and why does it matter? Number five, because it matters because God never wastes a hurt, H-U-R-T. We're talking about hurtful, painful experiences. God never wastes a painful experience. And the text here is Romans 8, 28. For we know that all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose, who love him and called according to his purpose. The New Living Translation says, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. It doesn't say that everything is good, right? We know that. In this world, there's a lot of evil. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of pain. You may be hurting today. Maybe you're hurting physically. Maybe you're hurting spiritually. Maybe your marriage is hurting or your, your relationships with your children or your parents or your, your spouse or your, or your kids. These are very painful times sometimes. But here's what we know, that God is able to take all those painful experiences and use them to shape us. Verse 28, God uses all things. God is able to make uh, something good out of all bad situations. In verse 29, it adds a tremendous truth here. And it says in verse 29, not only does God want us... Uh, to love him so that we can see things work together for good, but he also, it says, conforms us and shapes us into the image of his son. In other words, God can use painful experiences to make us more like Jesus. As a matter of fact, the thing that we we regret or resent or that painful thing that really is agonizing and hurtful, God wants to use it to shape you and to bless somebody else. The most powerful ministries are often born out of these painful experiences. Who can best identify with a person who's going through this cancer or any other kind of cancer than a person that's, that struggled themselves with that? Or uh, who can better empathize with a parent about a, a child, a wayward child, than, than a parent who has a wayward child? Those painful experiences God can use to shape you, to form you, to be more like Jesus and, and uh, form your character. And so this is, a, this is a tough one. How do we handle that? I think we have to do what Jesus taught us to pray. Not my will, but your will. Our Father in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done. That's what we have to pray. 
And what we have to do, as we are reminded this morning, is to remember Jesus. How do we remember Jesus? We remember, as we talked about, that God, Jesus says, I love you and I created you and I have a plan for you. I have a plan for you that, that extends through this life to be a blessing to other people and to eternal life. God wants to bless. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Do you believe that? That God has a plan, God has a purpose for your life. And Jesus said, I, I knew you before you were ever born. I loved you and I created you. Remember me. And then when we hear Jesus say that, we have to say, I remember something. I remember, Lord, that, that I'm a sinner, that I lose my way, I wander, I go down my own path, I rebel against you. God, please forgive me. God, you've promised if I would confess my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So remember that, that sin, what sin does a terrible thing. Sin separates us from God. Sin is like a wall, a barrier that comes. We reach out for God and sometimes we reach out with things. We try to do this. We try to be good or we try to do something for God. But everything we do to try to restore that relationship to our Heavenly Father falls short. Now that's the bad news. You see, we were created and planned. God has a purpose for our life and God loves us. But sin comes in and messes up this plan and we follow our own way. But when Jesus, when we listen to the words of Jesus, when he says, remember me, we remember that Jesus, the words of Jesus, who says, I am the way. Your way falls short, but I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And if you will believe in me, you can have eternal life. Remember me, Jesus said. Remember that I haven't given up on you, and I didn't give up on you. Remember that I was betrayed and abused and, and beaten and, and then nailed to a tree. My body was broken for you. My blood was shed for you. Remember, Jesus said. Remember that I died, but I'm alive. And because I live, you can live. You can have life. I'm risen from the dead, Jesus says in Revelation, and I have the keys of death and the grave. Because I'm alive, you can live. You can be forgiven, and you can have the gift of eternal life. And then finally, Jesus says, when you eat this bread and you drink this cup, what do you do? You show the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is coming again. When we remember we remember that God has a purpose and a plan for our life, that, that Jesus is the way, even for wayward sinners. If we will believe in him and accept him as our Lord and Savior, we can have eternal life because his blood was shed for me and his blood was shed for you.